Welcome back. On Wednesday, the 15th of December, the Senate rejected the nomination of Ibrahim Magu as the chairman of Nigeria's anti-graft agency, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The lawmakers attributed the rejection of the president's nominee based on security reports available to them. Now, reactions have not stopped trailing that move. I spoke to some legal practitioners to get their perspectives and the options open to the president. There's somebody who is handling the corruption agency or anti-corruption agency. And obviously the guy is taking the fight to the doorstep of the Senate. And obviously it is a natural thing that he's too hard, he's too tough, or uncompromising, or unbendable. And if he's confirmed, he may even take the fight too hard. They will look at it that because he's not confirmed, then maybe he's just trying to mellow down that indeed, like one of the musicians say, you show your color. Eventually, if he is confirmed, the possibility of showing the color will be there. So, from the onset, when they said they wanted his name to be confirmed, I knew that definitely it can't scale through. I knew that. So all these DSS reports, uh, security report, to me, they are all just calling, it, uh, calling a dog a bad name in order to hang it. The law is a bit silent on uh, what has happened now. Uh, what plays out at times is common sense. And of course, uh, what, you call, what you may call unwritten law. In the same society, uh, once a person is rejected like that, of course, that should be the end of it. The president should represent another fit and proper person. More so that the reason for Senate rejection is inked on security reports. Uh, I think the president, what the president needs to do is to, you know, look at that security report and, um, and then probably make up his mind to represent another candidate for all you care. I think that's the way forward for the president. Not putting the man in an acting capacity or for whatever reasons that uh, the president may choose to retain him. The ultimate goal which we are fighting is to get a society, one way or the other, that is devoid of corruption. And in any way we get to that very place, we should ensure that we should accept it in good faith. When I was going through the paper, ordinarily, with the SS report that came out, all things being equal, I believe they have done a good job. But where I have problem is there is this uh, maxim in law, or the uttering pattern, that is we must hear the other side. To have a fair hearing, I believe that ordinarily, they will have invited Mago, you understand? They will have confronted him with those monstrous allegations, the DSS report, and let him see whether he'll be able to defend himself. But in all, I believe with those allegations, they are very serious allegations that cannot just be pushed aside. So based on that very fact, the rejection, I will put it with a mixed feeling. By virtue of the fact that Magu was not given a fair hearing, I believe, ordinarily, that it is not fair enough. But at the same time, when you look at the potency, the seriousness of those allegations, one might not condemn totally the, uh, this, the Senate decision. And just before we go, let's now bring you a recap of some of the top trending stories in the news. We begin with the report at the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory sitting in Meitama, Abuja, last Tuesday, granted bail on server cognizance to a judge of the Federal High Court in Abuja, Justice Adeni Ademola and his wife, Olabowale, who is the head of service of Lagos State. Justice Jude Okeke granted bail to the couple shortly after they were arraigned on an 11-count charge, which includes being in possession of firearms without valid license, 
conspiracy to receive gratification and receiving gratification of 30 million naira from Joe Agui and Associates between March 11 and March 26, 2015. The defendants were also asked to sign bail bonds worth 50 million naira each in addition to depositing their passport and other travel documents with the court in order to fulfill their bail conditions. After the judge delivered the ruling on bail, the prosecuting counsel sought to begin trial, but the defense lawyers objected on the grounds that they had not been served with all the statements made to the Department of State Services by the defendants. In his ruling on the issues, Justice Okeke held that the principle of fair hearing demanded that the statements of the defendants must be made available to the defense lawyers before the prosecution could take further action. The court then adjourned till January 18, 2017 for commencement of trial. Staying in Abuja, an atmosphere of tension pervaded the Federal High Court in Abuja and its surroundings last Tuesday after Justice Bintan Yako granted the federal government's request for the protection of its prosecution witnesses lined up against the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu, with his co-accused persons. While Kanu's lawyer, Mr. Ifanye Jofo, expressed his dissatisfaction with the ruling, a defendant also protested from the dock. The judge, in reaction to the attitude displayed by the accused persons in the dock, warned them against being unruly inside the court. Some of the defendant's supporters who were allowed into the court building also engaged prison warders and other security operatives in a scuffle over the development. Some of the pro Biafran agitators who were waiting for the accused persons at the foot of the staircase leading outside the court building welcomed the defendants with pro Biafran songs. Justice Inyako in her ruling granted leave to the prosecution witnesses to be protected by giving evidence behind a screen that is to be provided by the court. The judge also held that the identities of all the prosecution witnesses will not be disclosed in any record or report of proceedings which are accessible to the public. The judge then adjourned till January 10, 11 and 12 for trial. Nobody can stop Biafra! Yes. 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 This is Biafra or death! Yes. Yes. We are ready to yes. die for Biafra! Yes. 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 In Lagos, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission last Wednesday rearranged a former governor of your state, Chief Rashidi Ladoja, alongside one Wahid Akombi for an alleged fraud of 4.7 billion naira. The rearrangement comes eight years after the former governor was initially charged for the offence. The EFCC claimed that Mr. Ladoja and his former commissioner for finance, Akombi, committed the offence in 2007. The offence, which is contained in an eight-count charge borders on money laundering and unlawful conversion of funds belonging to your state to their own. They had initially been arraigned in 2008 before Justice Ramat Mohammed of the Federal High Court Lagos. But the defendants challenged the charges and the case has gone on all the way to the Supreme Court before the matter is yet to be determined. The court has admitted the defendants to bail on conditions granted to them eight years ago since they had done nothing to breach those conditions. Trial was then fixed for February the 14th, 2017. And staying in Lagos, we round off with a case of a trial against the former governor of Abia State, Oji Zokalu, which has been fixed for 2017. Nine years after he was first charged, the case will be heard daily from the 6th to the 10th of March and from the 10th to the 13th of April, 2017. The former Abia State Governor is standing trial alongside two others on a 34-count charge of money laundering and alleged fraud. In the charges, the defendants were alleged to have siphoned Abia State funds totaling over $2.7 billion while Oji Kalu was Governor. The money was allegedly diverted into account of Slop Nigeria Limited, a company the EFCC claims is owned by him. Counsel to the former Governor Awa Kalu, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, has told the court and the former governor is anxious to clear his name as his business has lost all its credit lines because of the matter. And that's the program for today. If you missed any part of it, don't forget that you can find it in past episodes on our YouTube channel. Please share your feedback with us via any of our social media platforms. I am Shola Shieli. Thank you for watching.